What worries you most about the Nigerian economy? Well, if you say am I satisfied, I think I will just confess that I'm not yet satisfied. Why? It's because I believe the Nigerian economy can perform better with the potentials we have, human and resources that God has made available to us. We could do better. So, on that note, I'm not satisfied. And I think that uh, putting our house together quite well and then engaging in uh, policies that works, not too much delay in policy implementations, we should be able to do better. Mm. I think every eye is on Nigeria that this is an economy that has every opportunity to lead the world, mm. but we are not doing that. Mm. So I am not satisfied yet. Well, right, Prof, when you say you're not satisfied, we need to break it down a bit, uh, especially looking at the year 2018. Yeah. Uh, where, where and where will you say that we've made progress? And where and where do you think that we, we, you know, we didn't make any progress and still need to look well, forward to making progress? In 2018, right from 2017, we came out of recession. Mm. That is good. 2018, the economy started growing. Mm. By the end of the year, all of you are aware of the growth, which is a little bit okay. Mm. Uh, infrastructure deficiency have been addressed. Well, uh, we need to address it more. On the international front, I think we have not done well. Mm. I expect Nigeria to be able to take more leadership role within the Coas and within Africa than the way we are doing it. And you know, this one affects the head of the economy. On the African front, Nigeria, we are just at the front of the, uh, the beginning of African Economic Community Treaty of 1991, which of course started in 1980. But look at where we are now. They are going ahead without us, with African continental free trade area. As I'm talking to you now, we are having about 17 countries that have ratified the treaty. We have not even signed. And if we don't sign, that's spread. The, 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 the meaning is serious on the economy. Why? Because right of establishment, which allow member countries that are inside the treaty to mm. be able to move in terms of their businesses, Nigeria will not be able to move. Professional will not be able to move. Is that what we wanted? The entire thing started in the country. So I think that we need to move faster than this. Prof, now we had the chief trade negotiator of Nigeria some time ago last year, and he did speak on the issue of the ACFTA, talking yeah. about how Nigeria is doing their due diligence to yeah. ensure that we don't lose out in, for the government to accent to the ACFTA. Yeah. The government is saying they want to protect local manufacturers. Yeah. Do you think it's still a good, mo good move to go ahead to accent the document, yeah, knowing very well that our local manufacturers are going to suffer? I'm part and parcel of the latest assessment, which is quite good. There's nothing bad about it. Good. That is excellent. You have to be ready before you engage. But that is not a condition for signing. That may be a good condition for ratifying, but not a condition for signing. So we need to be able to prepare both. Signing means that you are part of the progress. Ratifying means that the thing can start operating in your economy. We need 22 countries to sign African continental free trade for it to become. The other put are signed. That means they have been carried along. Let me tell you, since 10 months ago, when the treaty was uh, came into uh, was signed in uh, in um, Kigali, Kigali. Mm. the country that signed have been meeting, and we are not part of it. Is that not what we wanted? Now, the danger of the entire process is this. If 22 countries actually ratify this, and we are not there, immediately any economic integration is ratified, is going to be deposited with World Trade Organization. And anybody that wanted to be a member of that particular economic integration arrangement, we have to go through what we call accession process. That means every country that is a party to that process, you have to go to them one by one the way China was able to enter WTO in November 2001. Don't you think that would be a difficult thing? It's going to be a difficult thing. Why? Because small country will not be imposing conditions on Nigeria. To be a member of ACFTA, which have been part right from the inception. Mm -hmm. So on international front, I will see, say, and maintain that we are not doing well. So for you, we would have, we would have signed first 
and sign then, and then you use the retrograde process to, to continue look at this other procedures. It's not binding on us until we say that this is what we want. It is ratified. It's what you ratify within your own parliament, within your country, that will be imposed on you. Mm. But you are part of the process. Mm. Now, another question. That's why they need only 22 mm. to but make it operational. Ratification that can come. Another question one want to find out is that looking at the size of the Nigeria market and the fact that when you speak about Africa, our population is huge. You, yeah. you, you also want to look at the fact that we have the markets uh, that the other uh, countries or that will make that will make this particular agreement uh, uh, what is supposed to be in terms of uh, what you are analyzing is an opportunity. Hmm. It should be an opportunity. We have the market good. We equally have the production opportunity. Look. Our attention has been focused too much on even the tradables yes. in terms of physical goods. Yes. What about the trading services? In which Nigeria has substantial potential. Go to any part of the African countries. You will see this your um, uh, people, uh, you know, what do you call it? Play people, uh, the, the, the Nollywood. Yes. They are doing excellently well. Other trading services uh, opportunity with Nigeria have computer. There are 12 of them, um, 12, 12 of them recognized within the WTO. We are better than many countries. So, in essence, it's, it's not about the physical goods? Says, no, 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 no. Education, transport, both air, road, everything. Right? Construction, architecture, IT. This is an area which Nigeria has substantial competence. We are not even looking at it. And look, articulately signing, the trading services have been concluded. So whatever trade readiness we are actually working upon for both trading services and trading goods, we cannot change. Our readiness cannot change it. Our readiness uh, as a cannot change it. Mm. So but the readiness as a necessarily speaking, I congratulate the government for that. That's a good one. We wanted to make sure that things are well. Mm. I mean, ordinarily, that's a very good strategy. But nobody is waiting for your readiness before the team actually come into operation. Once 22 countries actually ratify, whether your readiness is ready or your readiness is not ready, nobody bothers. Yes. So that means we still have time. If we have about 17 right now, we can still... Um, we have only seven more. Eh? Yes. Not 17. We, we have, have about, about uh, five. 22, 17. 22 we have five seven. more. Yes, you have five, five more. more. Yes. Hmm. If South Africa comes in today, the entire SADC may actually join tomorrow. So that may be conclusion. And if the AU court actually go ahead to go and deposit what has been done, and then deposit with AU, or I mean, deposit with WTO, what is our position? Before we leave the issue of this agreement, what are the, the, what the concerns raised really? Uh, uh, can we say that they are really cogent? You, concerns they are yes, cogent. If the manufacturer sign, let's uh, sign before we if the manufacturers then say that the production uh, 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 level in Nigeria mm. in terms of every various opportunity is not good enough for them to be able to participate. And That's the issues of unemployment. Yes. That is genuine. Flooding of the market and all of those. Wait okay. on the flooding of the market. Mm. Let me say this one. If other people sign and ratify the agreement. And then they are now producing a particular product. Let's say it's a Chinese company that's registered in Niger, is producing in Niger, and Niger is a member of African Continental Free Trade Area. Are you guaranteeing that the product will not enter Nigeria? What about if it's smuggled? And if it is smuggled right now, you don't have any right to be able to use the dispute settlement body or the African continental free trade to adjudicate your problem. That's the issue. But if let's say you sign, I mean, if you sign, you have a reason to say, no, this thing cannot enter. And then you make reference to the relevant uh, provisions of the dispute settlement system mm. within the continent to be able to argue your case. You will not be able to argue it now. Because you are and you are surrounded yeah. because you are not party to it. And you are surrounded by these countries that have signed and the issue they of smuggling, sign and then, smuggling and, then, and then because they sign into it and then they see Nigeria as a big market, let me tell you, many of them, we want to invest in some of these countries surrounding Nigeria. Mm. And then 
They will use all means to actually allow their vote. So that, that means more work for the Nigeria customers. Yeah, we need to do more. <laughs> we need to do more. If we can guarantee, can we now guarantee that uh, our customer will be able to work so well, far better? And these are the issues. But the greater issue is that you are going to have Nigerian professionals who may not be able to establish in other Africa because we are not part of this. Is that what we wanted? No, I don't think so. So government is doing a good work in terms of making sure that we look at the details. Mm -hmm. And then they are doing a very good work, seriously good work. But the issue is, what about if that thing is actually ratified tomorrow? That good work, what will it become? Perfect. Because <laughs> immediately it is ratified, yes. the content of everything will change. Those things that all those countries ratify, they are going to see how it's going to work for them. And which means the entire provision within the African continental free trade directive will start to change because they are the one qualified to change whatever thing they want. You are not going to be there to participate in change. Let's, let's move, let's tilt a little bit towards the angle of Nigeria's debt profile. Yeah. Now, a lot, a lot has been said, divergent views have actually divergence views have been raised concerning Nigeria's growing yeah. debt profile. We just saw the figures coming from the Debt Management Office, 22.4 trillion naira. Mm. Now, there's, there's a lot of worries. What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, my argument has always been that there is nothing wrong about debt if the debt is productive. And that is why in public sector economics, we separate debt with debt from productive debt. If a debt is productive, that means it can pay itself, it can service itself, yes. and then it's going to be so more reproductive that it's going to actually allow other economic activities. Fine. If our current debt level is still within the acceptable global standard, mm. and then it's focused in making sure that other factors of production in the economy are put into effective use and then we're able to pay the debt. My friend, I don't have any worry. But I have a worry, a serious worry, if we are actually borrowing to consume. The implication is that, is that you are going to be surcharging the future generator from the income they are going to earn, because they are going to be the one to pay the debt. What they will have consumed, they will not be able to consume it from what they are generating, because they have to pay the debt of their fathers. Is that what we wanted? For instance, just as Okunjo Wele have been pointing out, or pointing out 2012 and 2013, that borrowing to pay salary is not good. If we are actually borrowing to pay for the salary of people that are living here and that are, you know, or paying pension, that is not a good one. Because by the time this thing is going to be paid, four, five, six, ten, twenty years time, then that means the children who did not consume this thing are going to be the ones to pay it. Yes. So that is what we say that unless a particular debt is, uh, uh, what can I call it, is sustainable and is productive, it's not a good one. So whatever figure you are getting is not the size of the figure that matters, but it's the size of what is it, this it debt, what is it going to lead us? Yeah. Is it going to be a productive debt? If it's going to be good and it's put, fine. Take for instance, if the infrastructure in Nigeria is put in place and it's doing excellently well, to the extent that productive activities, yes. people can move from one place to another, yes. can happen. My sister, my brother, I think that's a good thing. But if not, then that means you are surcharging future generations. Now, you've just, you touched on the, the next question I was coming to, and that has to do with revenue generation, because uh, that, that is one aspect when you talk about debt, you also look at debt, you know, yeah. and revenue. Yeah. Uh, we saw recently that the FRS did something that was historic uh, okay. last year, yeah. raising over five trillion naira yeah. uh, mm -hmm. compared to what, which has not been done before. Now, I'm sure the, this, the, in 2019, they are looking at about eight, about eight trillion naira, if I'm correct. Uh, we also, also looking at the issue of infrastructure that you've raised. How can all of these, you know, work when we're talking about revenues? There was a report that we spoke about earlier in the program talking about ease of doing business, and the report from CBN actually highlighted several challenges mm. that, you know, the, the private sector is still going through uh, currently in Nigeria's environment or business space. 
how can all of this work together when infrastructure is still not there mm. and we have to pay debts and we're talking about showing up revenues. Mm. Well, on the issue of revenue from FRS, they are doing a very good job. But uh, let me say this one, that uh, as much as possible, uh, if they are projecting they wanted to collect more, if there are quite a lot of Nigerians that are not yet in tax net, they should actually make them to bring them to the tax net. I agree completely with that. Mm. In all countries of the world, in public finance economies, mm. public goods are financed by what all of us jointly contributed together, and therefore very, very important. But at the same time, our debt, uh, our uh, program of tax should not only focus on collecting, collecting. Tax itself can be used to be able to as an incentive, right? And that is why quite a lot of time, you see, when FRS is doing the one, you discover that uh, NIPC is trying to use the same tax incentive to be able to bring more investors. Mm. So I think there should be a way of harmonizing those two positions mm. so that the, 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 the FRS activity is not actually negating what is happening with the NIPC. Mm. I think they are meeting, but I think there is need for greater collaboration. The, 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 the debt they wanted, um, the uh, tax they wanted to collect, the level is quite good. Custom also, they are collecting a lot. But let us not forget that the issue of collecting uh, tax uh, should not be in a way in which, oh, we just run out of people and collect, collect, yeah. collect. You can equally use it to boost the economy. And we have to actually look at that as well. Because in the end, if the attention is just go and run after people and collect. By the time people feel discouraged, they won't produce again. And then that is when the economy will actually lose dive as a sort of punitive tax policy. When the tax policy is punitive, then people will surrender and then go and produce elsewhere. So oh. we have to be able to make sure we balance it too. All right, Prof. Now let's look at the issue of 2019. It's a very important year in Nigeria as we are approaching the elections. Yeah. Now, what, what, do you, what in your view can be done by Nigeria's economic managers to bring, a, to bring a turnaround in the system, especially in terms of the economy? Probably quick wins that we can take into consideration now, uh, that can help bring a turnaround. I agree with you. We need quick wins. Nobody is waiting for us. Right now we are lacking behind. We are lacking behind. And I'm not happy about it. As in general terms? Or in general terms. Okay. In the area that concerns me. Okay. Because we'll, we'll definitely On the issue of trade that yes. I want well, to refer yes. to. Yes. The last trade policy which you are using was the one that was being used in 2002. 60 years and 19 years ago. Without the changes. I was a member of the committee that worked on the last uh, government administration. That was 2011 to emerge with a new t um, trade policy. We, but... It wasn't signed to law. Even if it has a problem, revise it and then have so that we can use this thing to do our trade negotiation because that is our outlet to the external sector where we can collect more money. You understand? So these are the issues. Mm. Okay, even if we are saying, oh, we want to sign Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Wonderful. We prepared the agenda, we are okay. It should be based on what the trade policy of the economy say. And the trade policy of the economy equally will actually capture what the ERGP of the government actually make provision yeah. because that is the current development plan. <laughs> that is how you actually ensure that the development plan at the annual budget in line with the domestic policy are married together to actually focus the same thing. We need to be able to do all these things. Very important. Even our port activities we signed 2017 of trade facilitation. Are we really facilitating trade? Look at what is happening in the port. We need to move faster. That's why it's our first question. Mm. I say I'm not yet comfortable. I'm not yet. We need to move fast. All this affects where we are in the economy. And I think we need to move fast. Just as you really identified. We'll, we'll still stay with issues of trade, and uh, like you said, that, that is your area. We'll look at the contribution of trade now to uh, GDP and economic growth generally. We, we've seen that exports have actually kind of increased, but we'll still have more imports into the country. And what we're still exporting are, are raw, uh, you know, produce and raw materials. For you, should that still be uh, the situation when we're talking about 
high unemployment rates and issues of a value chain uh, for these products. You have answered the question. We shouldn't be producing primary products alone for export because it doesn't command higher level of foreign exchange. Now the question is, where is the missing link, sir? The, missing, the missing link, link is that the production process needs to actually come on board to be able to transform the primary product into semi-manufactured um, semi and final manufacture and sell to first the ECOWAS market, then continental market, then to the global market. But we, we, know, we know all of these issues. Yes. Uh, they have been repeatedly said. Yes. What is, what, what is still the issue? What you is holding us? You that the domestic uh, level has not been able to encourage manufacturers enough, which is the main thing with the manufacturers are talking about for not going to ACFTA, that they need a lot of uh, incentive to be able to do what they are doing. The government need to do more. They need to be assured of the infrastructure. They need to be assured of the various policies that affect production. And that is why we need to sit together again and look at all these things very well. Because quite a lot of the economy that we call developed economy of the world, they don't thrive on primary product. They thrive on manufacturing as well as services sector. There are some economies in the world the service sector is more or less uh, contributing nearly everything in the economy. And then other economies, yes, doing very well in the area of manufacturing. But to see we are doing the area of just removing oil from the ground and then yeah. selling it abroad, removing cocoa and then selling it to the process, removing it, I think, ah, ah. This is the story we have been hearing since I was in primary school. I think we need to move. Other people have moved. And they are definitely not waiting for us. Nobody will wait. Nobody will wait. I mean, the president of uh, Rwanda was saying that the economy is now good enough. Can we say that one? Mm. I don't think I can say that. Mm. Because we have the potential. God has endowed us with all this. Mm. But we need to. So that is one area in which uh, maybe this government may appear to be doing a little bit well in terms of infrastructure. Mm. But we still need to do more. We can't be late coma in these areas that affect productivity. Mm. All right, uh, uh, Prof, time is uh, running out. We'll look, yeah. We won't have your thoughts. You know, look in the outlook for 2019, it's uh, still with the year well, still coming up. Yes, as you said, it's a year of the election. We pray the election will be concluded quite well, and then so that we can now face the problem so of seriously national, tied, national development. Yes, mm. and then, but some of these things have to come up. Economic issues must be addressed economically. Mm. And the issue of corruption, which has been the real problem of this country, we need to tackle it by force. And everyone involved, everyone, to me, they have to actually get them. So that people don't go into that area again. Very important. Because you can have the potential, but corruption will not allow the potential, potential to materialize. Mm. That's it. Well, you want to do this when you want to construct a road, mm. but half of the money is going to, to private, private pockets. pockets. Then how will the road come? <laughs> Well, generally, you're optimistic that the year 2019 will be well, uh, yeah. like the World uh, Bank has projected about two over two percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, uh, two point five. Yes, I think Nigeria can actually do something like that. But it, it shouldn't be a dream. We have to work on it.